Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, in this episode what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on uh, Mark Bowden who is a body language expert. He's written books, he's been on TED Talks, he's been on multiple different things um, and he really does have some fantastic advice about body language and we're going to kind of reach in and see what advice we can get from him, him today. So I prepared four questions for Mark but just before we do that, uh, Mark would, be able to, would you be able to kind of quick introduce yourself? Sure. sure. So my name is Mark Bowden. I am the president of Truth Plane, a communications company who help people all over the world stand out in trust and adopt it every time they speak. So that's either by cheating me, I give you interviews, I give you one here, working with me, I travel all over the world. Fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for that, Mark. Um, and you do, I mean, I watched, uh, I was able to watch one of your TED Talks, um, and when I did, it kind of, like, the, the advice you gave to me, um, I was able to put it into action straight away. I um, mean, hopefully this one's, because this one's going to be focused towards the students more. Hopefully, when the students watch this, they can go away and get rolling on stuff straight away. So the first question is, um, for those who don't know, uh, oh, you've already started work, um, talking about this, but who are you and what, what is your main mission um, of Truth Plane and also your personal brand? So the mission of Truth Plane, like, really, as I said before, is to help people all over the world stand out with the profit. profit. And that really means that they're thinking the at the kingdom of justice, they're able to trust the kingdom and they're able to communicate in such a way that there's a real advantage for them, no matter who they are. So if you're a student out there today and you're listening to this, uh, the mission of, of this will be to help you be noticed every time you're in an interview because there are going to be so many people essentially there that they need to remember you. They'll remember you because they trust you. And if they trust you, then you're going to profit from the interview. You know, it's going to go well for you. Even if it doesn't mean you get that specific role, they're going to remember you and they're going to pass your name to somebody else. So that's really the, the mission, to help people just like you every time you communicate. Fantastic. Um, the second question is, how powerful um, can the use of body language be in everyday life, um, whether that's meetings, um, actually talking to people one-to-one, -one, or even giving talks? So body language is incredibly powerful because it's with body language, it's by seeing a visual image that we immediately decide whether somebody is a benefit to us or they're a risk to us. It's not what they say, it's how they behave and perform that gives us those snap judgments about whether we should get involved with somebody and have a relationship with them. And that's whether it's a business relationship or a personal relationship, you know, whether we should get involved with them or whether we should move away from them and try and avoid them or potentially more importantly whether we should simply be indifferent to them and again when it comes to interviews when you're looking at those first roles that you might get in the workplace in, in, in business or in organizations what you don't want is for that person to be indifferent to you because really then you've wasted your time and you've wasted their time if they can't see you. So, you know, the role of body language and why I think any student watching this should be really interested in it is that it helps people make, well, it doesn't even help them make a judgment. It's the major thing that causes others to make a judgment about you, positive or negative. So the important thing is, is if you can control that body language, if you can decide the messages you send out, then it's very likely you can predict the response that other people will have for you and then most likely if you use the right body language to put you into that positive category. So that's the importance for me. Awesome. Um, so the third question is for anyone that's out there and then wants to start using body language today, especially the students, um, what's the starting point if they would like to, um, uh, some physical activities, if they would like to start feeling more confident when public speaking um, or in meetings or interviews? 
Great. So I've got a really simple technique for anybody out there, which you can do immediately. It takes no practice at all. You're either going to do it or not do it because it's something you can naturally do anyway, and you're naturally doing anyway. But often when under stress and under pressure, when unconfident, you're not doing it. So here's what I want people to do is under stress, under pressure, when they're feeling unconfident or they're going into a situation where they think they're going to be unconfident, I'd like people to make bigger, more open gestures, okay? And that really looks like what I'm doing for you now, okay? Is that I'm doing lots of open hand gestures, yeah? And I'm open in my body area here, in the stomach area, in the chest, in, in essentially the torso, I'm making open hand gestures, and open in the torso area. You'll also notice my gestures are symmetrical. You might want to uh, concentrate on that as well. But the main thing to concentrate on, to cause others to feel that you're calm and assertive and confident, and also to trigger a calm and assertive feeling in yourself, make open gestures at navel height or at chest height in the torso area, okay? So these kind of gestures here. Just to give you an idea, what happens when you're unconfident is you'll tend to close up around those areas. Yeah. Now, it's not always because you're unconfident that you close up around, around these areas. Okay. But the thing is, is that other people will perceive it potentially as unconfident or indifferent or detached. And I would guess in in any interview, the last thing you want to come across is unconfident, indifferent, and detached. Yeah, you want to come across as confident, interested, and engaged. And so just thinking about me, does this person feel to you confident, interested, and engaged? Well, the only reason you'll be feeling that from me is because of my behavior. Because there's really nothing about the words that I'm using which causes me to come across as confident. I'm just giving across my content, which I know anyway. Yeah? So do the body language of confidence, and that's open gestures in the torso area. Hope that uh, is useful for everybody there. I definitely think it will be, actually. Um, a lot of students don't know anything about this kind of body language area. Um, so, I mean, I think they're getting immediate value. Um, the next question was, um, obviously, straight up, um, when students are in those kind of interview situations, what is your kind of top tip going in um, about how to, like, uh, I don't know whether you, I wanna, you want to touch on body mirroring, um, that kind of um, utilization in interviews. How can body mirroring be utilized in interviews? Yeah, so people often ask me questions about body mirroring all the time, especially in sales. Uh, people have uh, heard a lot in the area of sales around uh, body mirroring. And, and if you're going into an interview, essentially you're selling, yeah, and you're selling yourself or an idea about yourself. Uh, body mirroring absolutely works. Body mirroring is just copying the other person's nonverbal communication, mirroring that, okay? It absolutely works, but the reality is, is we do it anyway, naturally. Yeah, we're designed to mirror unconsciously other people's body language. Yeah? You'll be mirroring mine at the moment, Francesco, and anybody watching this as well is most likely mirroring stuff that's happening in my face. And even if you're not mirroring it physically, internally in your mind you're mirroring it. The reason you can mirror my body language so simply is that I'm doing simple body language. But I just want to show you, if I do very complex body language, yeah, and stuff that's easy, difficult for you to follow, you'll stop mirroring me and you'll start doing your own, your own stuff, okay? Because it's so difficult for you to copy this agitated body language. So, we mirror anyway. Here's the problem with mirroring. Just imagine, Francesco, that you've come into an interview with me, okay? I'm interviewing you, and my body language, is this, yeah? Now, this doesn't mean that I'm indifferent or detached or upset or angry with you, okay? It doesn't mean that, but it could look like that, and I could be. Is this useful body language for you to mirror in an interview? Definitely no. not. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, here's what you need to understand. 
only ever mirror body language that seems to fit well your agenda, what you want out of the conversation. Only mirror the body language of somebody who's doing what you would like them to do in order for the conversation to be a benefit to both of you. If they're doing something different than that, don't mirror it. Show them body language that is a benefit. So um, lead, don't read the body language. You decide the agenda non-verbally so they can mirror you rather than you mirror them if the body language is not useful. So I hope that, that makes uh, sense to you and to everybody out there. Yeah, definitely. Um, really appreciate your time. Those are the four questions. I wanted to keep it short for um, everyone out there, especially students. They don't want to spend too long on the um, on the videos. But no, really, really appreciate your time, Mark. Um, and thank you very much. And um, I, I mean, you're doing such amazing things. Um, have you got another TED Talk planned soon? Nothing, nothing as yet, but uh, hopefully in the, in the future. And, and thank you, uh, Francesco, for having me uh, on this uh, YouTube. And uh, thanks for your great work. It's, it's great that you're getting this information out to students. You know, one of the things that people tell me all the time is they wish they'd have known this stuff when they were a student. Yeah, they wish they'd have known this stuff earlier. So it's great to get people when they were a student. Yeah, I really hope it does, um, for sure. I'll push this out um, this week. So thank you very much, Mark. I uh, really appreciate your time. Um, and if anyone else is on the YouTube, please do check out any other videos um, and see what can help you. Thank you very much, and see you soon, Mark. See you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.